Hi, welcome to the Cam Channel. This is Xu Hang. Today, I will present a very interesting perspective paper published on science. The paper reports a solid-state physics methods developed to understand operations of organic light-emitting diodes, or OLEDs. It's a very effective method to differentiate capacitive and faradaic processes in the polymer-based energy storage devices. Traditionally, conjugated polymers store charges by oxidations or reductions, and charge transfer process is considered as faradaic. However, several recent studies show that the charge storage process is purely capacitive in poly 3,4 ethylene diocesulfene adopted with polystyrene sulfonate, or P dot PSS. Is it just an exception? In our previous tutorials. We show that cyclic voltammogram can be a way to differentiate the capacitive and faradaic process. A rectangular-shaped CV indicates capacitive process, and if there is a pair of peaks with large separations observed on the cathodic and anodic scan of the CV curve, it indicates faradaic process. However, the CV methods measures the overall results of a series of events. Including, for example, semiconductor-conductor transition, morphology changes, delocalized states, and multiple doping mechanisms. So, for a complicated charge storage process, it offers limited information. In this science paper, the authors show a very efficient way, similar to the understanding of the OLED, to interpret the complicated charge storage process in the organic polymer electrode. Here shows the simplest OLED. There is an organic semiconductor sandwiched between two metal electrodes. It emits lights with three steps. Step one: injections of holes and electrons into the delocalized highest occupied and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, also called the homo and lumo of the organic layers. Step two: charge transport. And step three: recombination and emit light. To improve the OLED efficiency, several parameters can be adjusted, such as energy barrier at the contact, the spatial distribution of electric field, and spatial distribution of the charge inside the device. Here it shows how to transfer the understanding of the OLED into the electrochemical energy storage process. For the electrochemical oxidation process, it can be divided into five elementary steps. First step: hole injections from the metal electrode into the homo of the polymer. Second step: hole transport within the delocalized homo of the polymer on the electrolyte sides. Step three: anion injections from the electrolyte into the polymer. Step four. Anion transport in the free volume between the polymer crystallinities and the chains, and finally the electrostatic compensations of two charges in the bulk of the film. Now let's get back to the question: How to tell if it is a capacitive or faradaic process? For a capacitive process, all the five elementary steps should work efficiently. It means it is a volumetric charging and pure capacitive process. In this case, the CV curve should be rectangular. If there is barrier for injection process, the CV curve will show peaks, but the process is still dominated by the capacitive mechanism. Low efficiency of any elementary steps or the presence of competing reactions will all lead to faradaic process. For example, electron transfer from the polymer to the oxygen occurs if injection of electrons at energy level of the polymer that lies above the lumo of the molecule oxygen. Poor injection of the holes or ions or slow transport of one of the charges will cause large interfacial fields and result in electrolysis. The injected ions and polymer chains can also have electron transfer and hence faradaic process. Because P dot PSS show high mixed ionic and electronic conductivity, all steps are efficient and hence it is capacitive. In comparison, 
Redox polymers show fluoridic behaviors due to their lower electronic carrier mobilities. The method described in the perspective paper further offers ways to promote or suppress the fluoridic reactions of polymers by controlling the five elementary steps. As you may notice that we maintain our channel only on Sunday. The video in our eCam channel are completely free and only for educational purposes. Subscribe us and like our videos will certainly motivate us. If you have any questions, suggestions, or find anything that conflict of interest in any type, just leave us some comments. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.